Newport, Newport Sound. We're in the Newport Sound now. Yan ang mga barko, ano? Barko na sasakyan namin. Look. Yung tiket natin. Baka na yung kick-up tayo. So we're going now. Ayun. Oh, in blue lang. In blue lang. Good morning. Yeah, those ones. Thank you very much. Thank you, bro. That's welcome. Morning, bro. This is my new step. He's heading on board the boat. How's it going? Dito muna sa dito. Dito muna sa dito. Dito muna tayo. Dito muna sa maganda dito. Diba? Dito sa dito. Kasi tanong ako yung makakaroon. Morning. Kia ora. Koto kato. Hari mai. Welcome to Pio Pio Tahi Milford Sound. And welcome aboard your vessel here this morning. The Lady Bowen. Just kick back, chillax and enjoy the lap around the self-proclaimed eighth wonder of the world with us on board the Lady Bowen this morning. Don't let the weather or the elements put you off getting out there, getting in amongst it. This is some of the best uh, weather we can get here. I suppose a rain is a part of the name here in a rainforest, after all. And we certainly do get quite a lot of it. If you didn't know, you're actually visiting one of the wettest places on Earth. It rains over half the year, about 200 or more days of the year, with an annual rainfall of anywhere between 7 to 9 metres, so pretty extraordinary. With all this rain, it does bring this place to life with thousands and thousands of waterfalls. All, however, just temporary and rain dependent. So about a day without rain, 99% of the waterfalls here will dry up and disappear. Three to four days without rain, that would be considered a drought. Um, so that hardly ever happens. Uh, so my guess is we're gonna see quite a few waterfalls. It only takes a couple of hours of steady rainfall for all the waterfalls to appear but quite a lot of them do disappear after a couple of hours of the rain stopping. So we do need a good bit of consistent rain uh, for the waterfalls to appear for us uh, today. We'll definitely see two waterfalls. They are permanent, they are glacially fed waterfalls. One of them's just off to the starboard side, right hand side, just as we depart the harbour. Beautiful big waterfall there, pretty hard to miss. Second time, upon return back into the harbour, so fingers and toes crossed. That one there marks the start, but also the end point of our voyage today. Until, the plan, until then, the plan of attack for the voyage today is what we're going to do, is we'll cruise along the southern side, back down the northern side. As we come back down the northern side, we've got a stop to make, and that's at the underwater observatory. About quarter past 11 or something like that. We'll stop off at the underwater observatory. Everyone's going to get off there um, today. Some of you, I think there's about four on board, maybe going kayaking, so that'll be the end of your trip with us. Uh, you'll stay there, and you'll come board apart, and then we'll make our way back to the harbour just before or around about half past yeah, 12 this afternoon, all going well. Sorry. Yeah, we'll <laughs> they're not for the commercial operators, they're more for recreational uh, fishermen. They don't want to head right out towards the rugged open sea. They might not have the need for transport to get right out there in terms of uh, stability wise. They might just have a wee tinny or something like that. Uh, so you can just pull up in the sheltered parts of the fjord here and uh, try and catch a bee. Make activity, bring them back from the brink of extinction. Now having over 160 uh, couple of Thank you. Thank you.
be pretty of a great life for us. And not really at all uh, so often. You can find the old totra tree around here, which Māori used to carve into wakas or canoes. Um, and you can also strip back the inner bark of it sticking out there. That's known as a rimu, one of the more larger dominant trees in our rainforest. Rimus and manuka was the favourites of the likes of Captain James Cook. Captain James Cook actually created and brewed New, Zeal New Zealand's first beer uh, with the rimu and also the manuka tree. This was way back in 1773 in a place called Dusky Sound, just further south of us. And why he brewed it is it was said to help the sailors of a disease called scurvy. So pretty much in order to prevent scurvy, they used to drink the spruce beer all the time. If they had scurvy, in order to get rid of it, they used to drink the spruce beer all the time anyway. So you'd probably say that they were spruced up 24-7. Probably what gives them the reputation of being drunk as sailors as well. Uh, now that beer is still being made today, the Captain Cook Spruce Beer by a brewery in Christchurch. It's called Weber and Breweries. Uh, so still making the original recipe today, not Colonel's original recipe, but Captain Cook's. So if you do want a bit of a taste of history, um, they do sell it in Fresh Choice in Tiana. Obviously not today though, but still there tomorrow, check it out. Over check out our little cafe bar, you can take a photo of the bottle. You know what to look for, there's not too many places you can find it.
that's the main reason because it gets exposed when the tide goes down. Uh, but even when the tide's up, usually that sort of first couple of metres is all uh, fresh water. And the group is quite a few, so it's not quite overwhelming in the chamber. So just make sure you stay as a collective group with your friends and find out. in the next 10 minutes or so when we have to head on upstairs. Okay, so please enjoy it while we're down here. So yeah, you guys are the lucky ones. You get to see all this first. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, right. well, we can see the rock falls there as well. Folks should be able to find a variety of different creatures, things like sea cucumbers and sea stars, animals that can move out of the freshwater layer. Not sure if anyone's noticed already, but this building is floating, okay? We are a marine reserve. It is illegal to anchor in the fjord, and we're a national park. It's illegal to build on the fjord. So we're attached to it instead. So uh, this 50 ton solid steel structure is just holding on to the mountain side behind us. Now don't worry about things like pressure when we're down here, guys. This is not glass that we're looking through today. This is a plastic type called acrylic. Uh, believe it or not, sits at 120 millimeters thick. They weigh 160 kilograms per window, and they cost $10,000 per each. So yeah, very, very expensive now looking out to the gardens today, the gardens will naturally attract a variety of different fish like. Uh, do keep your eyes open for cowlai and kingfish. We have some massive warlocks outside the front door about an hour ago. It would be really, really cool to see some of these cowlai. Cowlai. Uh, yeah. Sea creatures. So the corals will break up the underwater current, or any current that there is. This allows some of the creatures that we're seeing today to have a bit of an easier existence. Um, very ironic, but a lot of the fish that we're seeing can't swim. These can't swim very well. 
smallest ones that we've seen today, the oblique swimming triple fins. These are yellow and black in color. They were equipped without a swim bladder. This means that if they stop swimming for too long, they end up sinking, the water starts passing over their gills, they go into a coma-like trance, and they eventually, for lack of better words, drown. Okay. Now, because of their size, they are very skittish. If they're getting in the way of your photographs, just wave your hands really quickly, back and forwards, they should just start them. Now some of the larger ones we've seen today are butterfly perch, these will be the pink ones with black spots, you see them all over the place. We've got some scarlet wrasps, red backs with white underbellies, and of course some New Zealand spotties, grey and green with black spots as well. Now this is where Mother Nature gets very, very clever, reproduction. Now for us humans, reproduction can be quite a fun thing. And for fish, not so much, they release millions of sperm and eggs. And what we can find is that 0.1% of these sperm and eggs will go on to fertilize and become some of these fish that we're seeing today. So in order to do this, Mother Nature has created all of them female. So every fish that you're seeing today, apart from some of the triple fins, are female. Now halfway through their lifespan, they're going to start producing testosterone. This is a completely natural phenomenon. They have no control over it. And uh, what happens is their bodies will get larger and rounder, more solid in color. And from there, they become full-blown males. The males are then going to turn on the females. They're going to start harassing them for the rest of their lives. And what it does, it stops the testosterone from being produced. It keeps the population nice and equal. But it doesn't stop there. After the floods of 2020, they have three and a half weeks before COVID-19. And we have to shut down this building for after three to four months. In two of those three and a half weeks, we noticed a lot of male scarlet grass outside. Scarlet grass, if you see them, will be the big red fish. We've noticed that groups of four or five scarlet grass were actually uh, attacking some of the single ones on their own. And after about two weeks, these males began producing hormones of estrogen. Their bodies started changing. The bellies got whiter, their tails more yellow. They reverted back to their female stage just to bring up the population once more. So it's remarkable what Mother Nature's created. We as human beings, for example, are born either male or female, although you can take supplements nowadays to change that. These fish are born with it naturally. They have to have it triggered. This is the key to their survival. So if there's too many males, they'll turn back into females. Got it. And again, that has to do with the fact that we are an open marine zone, so we don't fish them, we don't dredge them, we don't net them, we don't have a natural marine environment today. The gardens themselves, folks, uh, believe it or not, uh, James Cook managed to draw up this entire map before stepping foot on the islands of New Zealand. Okay, so he circumnavigated the country and didn't even step foot on the land. So there are going to be a few notable differences to this, Lake Topor up in the North Island, it's completely non-existent. It's the largest freshwater lake in the Southern Hemisphere, and it doesn't exist here on the map. Uh, Banks Island is not an island at all, it's Banks Peninsula, just off of Christchurch. You can go there, see all the penguins and the seals and the whatnot. And finally, we have Stewart Island down at the bottom, which is, of course, an island not connected to the mainland. So please feel free to have a look at this. It's a pretty cool, pretty old map. Um, is anybody cold? Oh, I heard one, yes. Uh, so what I might do, folks, for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes is just whack on our beautiful diesel heater there as well, just to try and warm us up. Please keep in mind, guys, do not hang anything on these rails. It will catch on fire. This is a wooden building. Okay, I'm going to throw that out there now. Now, does anybody have any questions? Everyone happy with that? Sweet, so feel free to take a wander. Please grab me if you, if you want to know anything. We've got 20 minutes before we start loading you back in the boat. Oh. Can you get them? You don't want to get them. Go ahead, get them. Part three. Get them. Hi. Yeah. Hi. 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 Thank you, bye, Thank you, bye, Thank you very much, folks. Have a great day. Thank you. Welcome. Warm, 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 warm. Mm. 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 Kapi mana kapi? Kapi mana kopi? Semua kopi. Kapi kapi kapi. Kapi kapi kapi. Kopi. 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 Semua kopi. Okay.
Ô Pasyal ka lang dito, pwede rin, no? Hindi ka mag-ano, no? Eh, parking mo. May bayad ka rin. Eh, saglit ka lang, no? Ganda, no? Ay, ano lang, drop off lang. 
Hi. Ito, we start kami sa Milford Sound sa bandang. Ang ganda ng view dito. Tignan nyo yung mga yung bundok, puro falls. Puro falls ang bundok. Napaganda. Lalo na yun, ha? Ha? 